My name is Vera Moore, President and CEO of Vera Moore Cosmetics. I'm from Queens. I came from a very poor family, and I knew I had to work. So in high school, I took courses that would enable me to get a job. And right out of high school, I started working for the city and the federal government. They used to come around and uh, interview people, and then I prepared myself. I took, um, I guess you don't understand a lot of people, I said shorthand and nobody knows what I'm talking about. But uh, that's what I took in order to get a job with the federal government. And I stayed there for five years. I had a plan because on the weekends I honed my skills as an artist because I used to sing in church, so I studied for it. And um, that's what I did. I segued into theater after getting a role, a major role on Another World soap opera. What inspired you to take the leap from artistry to entrepreneurship? Well, I, um, thanks for asking. I, uh, there was a void in the market, <coughs> excuse me. And when I got the big contract on Another World, a soap opera, there was no cosmetics for me. Mm -hmm. There were no cosmetics specifically targeted for the black woman or the woman of color. And uh, what they had was greasy, oily, red, rubbed all off on your clothes, and my character was a nurse, Linda Medcalf. And uh, I, I didn't like the way I looked. And what they had out there wasn't, wasn't enough. And this, I mean, this was, not, this was big time, national television. So that was, the, that was the genesis of it, to fill the void mm -hmm. with a quality product. Now, they had some things out there, but it wasn't quality. Absolutely. They were red, they were greasy, they were oily, and under hot lights on national television, I knew I could do better. So Love I it. did. Yeah. So I got to know, mm -hmm. you know we don't gatekeep over here. Right. All right. How did your partnership with Dwayne Reed come about? Well, listen, that wasn't, the partnership was easy, but the process was difficult mm. once you got the partnership. So how did it come about? I had been in Macy's. I had done a lot of things. I had been, oh, wow. you know, Broadway. I had done uh, things with other companies. And they found me. Oh, they found you. They found me, okay. yes. And they said, you know, we're, we're doing an initiative called the Look Boutique. Mm. So this was the first time I had been in mass market, but we weren't on mass market shelves. This was something like an Ulta or Sephora. Mm. Look Boutique was a store within a store. And I was very, very excited about it. But you ha see, you know what? You gotta be retail ready. Mm. That's just gotta be ready for it. When the opportunity knocks, you gotta be able to blast and go in. Can you tell me what does that mean, retail ready? Retail ready means that can you fill the order? Mm. Not only can you fill the order, very important, can you fill the order in a timely fashion? If they call you and say they want that order Friday and they're calling you Monday, they don't want that order two weeks from now. Right. So you did not fill the order. Right. Okay. And then they have what they call a catalog. All you have to have your codes and all that stuff. You have to be, it's not easy. It's not easy. It looks, it's nice to say, oh, I'm in a thousand stores, but can you stay in the store? Can you say, you getting can get on the, it, can you keep it? At, getting on the shelf and staying on the shelf is totally a different thing. As a rising entrepreneur, and what steps did you take to kind of carve your own space? Well, you know, the challenges are great when you're the first. It's always difficult because it's, you know, you're, you're going down a path that hasn't been charted, uncharted waters, you're breaking new barriers. So what, the important thing for me was I knew there was a void, I knew there was a niche, and I did my research. Mm. And uh, I went to manufacturers and said, this is what we need, and that's what I did. Wow. Your being here today really exemplifies your commitment to community and to sisterhood. Can you tell me how important that has been to you in your journey building your business? It's the most important thing there is because, you know, people, what is success? Success is not making a lot of money. Success is, do you give it back? Do you, do you lift as you climb? Mm. And that's why it's so important for me to do things like this, to be proactive with communities because I came from a very poor community. Mm. And I was just very blessed that people helped me. Yeah. So giving back to the community grows the community. It helps the kids' self-esteem. It's just, it's just the right thing to do. Well, take your time. You can't be an entrepreneur just because Remy's an entrepreneur. It has to be a passion. You have to know your why because you won't survive it. You know, it really has to be an innate part of you that I really can do that. And why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. It's to serve. It's to, you're, It's really a service business, you know. Yeah. You have to love it. And, you know, oh, it has to be a real good purpose that you want because passions change. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I like ice cream. It's vanilla. Oh. I used to like vanilla, but I don't like it anymore, you see? But it's different yeah. if it's really your purpose and you're satisfying and you see the end result of the fruits of your labor. That's, that's what success is about. Yeah, that's what keeps you, you going. Exactly. Look, you know, I have customers that I'm doing their grandchildren. 
I'm dating wow. myself now. Yeah, my mother told me to come to you because I wanted something soft and I'm graduating from high school and she didn't want me looking like this. That's generational, that's sustainability, wow. and that's what you want. That's beautiful. Yeah, you want sustainability. Thank you so much, Thank Vera. you so much. Aw, thank you.